Hi everyone, I'm Melissa McKay. I'm a developer advocate with JFrog, and I'm here at the DevOps Speakeasy at JFocus 2023. And I'm sitting next to April Wenzel. Pleasure to have you here. Thank you for looking, having me. Looking forward to talking with you. Me as well. Um, what brings you to JFocus? So I'm here at JFocus. I did the keynote this morning, so that, that was the uh, uh, initial reason. But I'm also here now to just meet awesome people and uh, cool. hear wonderful talks. Awesome. Now, what's your background? Uh, so, uh, studied computer science, worked as a software engineer, technical leadership roles, a bunch of different companies, lots of job hopping all over the place. A uh, lot of it in Silicon Valley. Um, now I live in San Diego with my own company. Uh, so now I teach emotional intelligence and collaboration skills and that sort of thing to engineers uh, and um, even how it applies like in the code. So I still very much apply that background to the work that I do now. That's incredible. Thank you. You know, I've had a couple discussions now with folks, um, just attendees and other speakers mm. that, and it keeps coming up time and time again that coding itself is simple. The hard part is the people problems. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Yeah, and sadly, it doesn't get enough attention in our industry, although it's improving, but it, it's, it's been an uphill battle, I will say. <laughs> So I did, I missed your keynote this morning. How could you? How I know, could you? I know. I'm, I'm looking for recordings <laughs> later on. I think yeah. uh, recordings will be available after the conference. True, so true. Really looking forward to that. Um, but uh, let me give me an idea. What was it like? What was the feel in the audience? Yeah, I'll give you the Cliff's Notes version. Yeah, there you go. Um, no, it was it was so it was so wonderful. Uh, they have walkout music, which is so cool. So they have a live <laughs> band doing the music. It was very awesome. They did like jazz at the beginning, and then they 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 do music for transitions. That part stood out. The stage is amazing with the snow and everything. It's so beautiful. Um, but so the, that's to give an idea of the mood and whatnot. Um, but yeah, you could just there's it's palpable. I mean, this is one of the reasons. Like I value these in-person events so much is you can just you can literally like feel the energy in the room like you can hear it you can like you know what I mean there's yeah. all the senses are engaged there's like a lot going on there um, so yeah so I talked about uh, uh, the way I kind of structured the talk was I talk about how we can stay human while coding is the name of it um, staying human while coding and I talked about uh, some of the skills that set us apart from the machines that we work on so curiosity creativity and compassion were the main ones I talked about but I also talked about some of our tendencies as developers that get in the way of those skills. Um, so things like binary thinking, um, that, of, that either or, like right or wrong, uh, good or bad practices, mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff that keeps us from having empathy for other people uh, and other approaches. And you know, uh, so that, that was one that I talked about. Um, the fact that we focus so much on, especially in DevOps, uh, efficiency and making things fast yes. and how that sometimes collides and interferes with uh, efforts to be compatible. Passionate, or right. uh, because human stuff takes time, and you know, yep. and it's meant to. And if you try to optimize for that uh, efficiency with people, it just it doesn't always work. Yeah. Um, and then I talked about fault finding as well. That you know, in the code, it makes sense to look for problems and to focus on the negative, but that you know, with human beings and and even. Um, when trying to be creative, if we're always kind of shooting down ideas and looking for the bad, it blocks yes. our creativity. So that was kind of the other main point. See, I could have yes. just given it in five minutes, really. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Here we have it. The keynote. And right I talked here. for an hour. This so is I was awesome. like, what was I even going on about? <laughs> I'm definitely going to have to look this up later because uh, this is really, really, I think this hits a lot of us where it matters most. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of us struggle with this. It, and like you said, it's easy to find fault and pick your pick apart your code and mm -hmm. you know find all the ways that it might possibly not work and you can't do that very well with human beings without causing some um, fractures in your relationships for sure absolutely um, what do you think and and this is something that has come up I now have adult children and they're oh, starting wow. to okay. enter the workforce and stuff and, and we talk about these subjects too mm -hmm. um, what do you think just about having this uh, psychological safety mm -hmm. uh, amongst your team. Like yeah. How important is that to make sure that everyone feels it's okay to speak up um, and, and making sure that, you know, one person isn't blamed because the build broke. Right, things exactly. Like that. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. The build blaming. I mean, I think <laughs> of the days when, like, you'd have to wear, like, a dunce cap or something if you broke the build or, like, you know, that yes. you'd be called out if you if you broke the build. Uh, but, or get blame, right? Like, the, the mm -hmm. command. It's, like, that's very much kind of baked into the pretty culture negative, of it. Huh? It's pretty negative, yeah. Which, um, But anyway, but, no, I do think psychological safety is very important. I think uh, it's, you know, it's a complex topic, and sometimes 
people take their own kind of like view of it. And um, I think one important element of psychological safety is that it includes everybody on the team, right? Because sometimes you have to have uncomfortable conversations to make people feel included on the team. And other people may say that that makes them feel unsafe, but really it's like, it, Safety doesn't necessarily mean comfort, and I think there's an important distinction there. Very good um, point. And you know, compassion, for example, doesn't always mean nice. Sometimes it means being assertive and speaking up and having those uncomfortable conversations, difficult conversations. And I think that the same is true with psychological safety. It needs to be there, um, but it's sort of a nuanced thing where you're still going to have to have disagreements and find a way to work through that. I think, yeah, what you said makes total sense. It's, it's not the same as comfort. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Really, really interesting. Um, I've, I see these types of issues all of the time. Um, what would you have to say about teams that are made up of, you know, varying levels of experience? Mm -hmm. Do you see, you know, tension there sometimes? Or, or is there any, like, a specific team makeup that you would point out as rife for <laughs> issues? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think an, un an imbalance in, in any way can, can be harmful. Like, I think if you have too many, if you have, like, all senior people, I think you can often have people who are stuck in their ways in some, in, in, to some degree, and mm -hmm. uh, you don't have some of that fresh perspective. Uh, and also, the, you start to atrophy the skills of mentorship because you don't need to use it if you're all kind of, you know, on the same page. And people right. come to be siloed and that sort of thing. So I think you do want junior, less experienced people on the team as well. Yes. Uh, however, if that's if you have too many junior people and then you don't have somebody to help mentor, enough people to help mentor, maybe the one person who is senior feels overwhelmed and they're burning out because they just don't have the capacity to mentor 20 <laughs> people right. or whatever it may be. Um, so I do think that's an important piece. I, I think that people with more experience can um, make an effort to to mentor. I do think that's part of our jobs. You know, I really do. Yeah. And um, building up those skills is really important. Um, I think it's Ron Jeffries in his book, The Nature of Software Development, says that a highly paid expert is not highly paid like only to be an expert, but also to help other people become experts. Yes. And I'm paraphrasing, but something to that um, effect. And I think that that's really important. So like things in our industry, like RTFM, <laughs> read the right. freaking manual, not <laughs> right. a nice way to help juniors. Because exactly. Maybe makes they did look it up. It's hard. Yeah, sorry, yeah. go ahead. Makes them feel reluctant to ask. Exactly. Because they're just going to get shot down or, exactly. or feel made to feel like they're idiots. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Pretty, pretty typical. Um, I know, like, after many years of being in the industry, you can develop kind of this hard shell <laughs> yeah. and forget what it's like yeah. when you're new and you're yeah. coming in. I know I've been guilty of that <laughs> myself. Sure, we all have. Sure. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I love your emphasis on empathy. Thank making you. Making sure we remember that what it was like to be in their shoes. Yeah, we all went through it. Yeah. Um, there was another thing that I learned. This is what I love going to conferences for. We're always learning how to improve ourselves, improve our teams, That's improve true. our processes. True. And um, keynotes like yours are very, very important. Thank because, you. Because, like I said earlier, the coding is easy. It's the people <laughs> problems that we run into for the most part. It's pretty easy to pick up another language, pick up another tool. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to communicating with your team and um, making sure that you're efficient in the human way yeah. makes a big difference. Um, so this one other thing I learned was just um, we expect a lot of ourselves, don't mm -hmm. we, as developers. Mm -hmm. A lot of us are perfectionists. Yes. Uh, we think we need to know everything. And the fact of the matter is we don't and we never will. And this is why we need other perspectives in involved in the team. Uh, I see this all the time just, just in like testing, mm -hmm. writing tests. Like, I assume that something's going to be uh, used in a certain way, so I write tests in a certain way. Yeah. And um, as a result, maybe that goes into production and chaos ensues because a whole use case was not considered or thought of. Sure, yeah. So pretty incredible. Well, um, is this your first time in Stockholm? Uh, no, it's actually my second time. So nice. one of my very first uh, compassionate coding related talks was at uh, Microsoft Tech Days in Stockholm in 2016. So nice. um, yeah, nice. so I, I'm, that was in November. So it was also snowy. I'm looking, <laughs> we're, we're, we're by the snow. So I'm looking out at the snow. It's it's lovely. Um, and uh, I, I love it here. They have tons of vegan food. I'm vegan and like uh. it's a very vegan friendly city. So I'm, I'm all the people are so kind. I just, I love it here. How awesome. about you? 
Yeah, this is my second time here. Second okay. time in the winter. Okay. The so we're in the same boat. The, yep. <laughs> first time was in the spring. Okay. Um, and it was absolutely gorgeous. And it is still absolutely gorgeous, just in a different way. Yes. Um, we, we had a really nice um, walk through the old town. Mm -hmm. That was really interesting. And I just love the city. Um, I wish I could spend more time here. Mm. I, it's, I know difficult. You probably travel quite a bit, right? Mm -hmm. Giving keynotes and going to different conferences. Sometimes it's a struggle to let go of where you've just been. You kind of get attached. It's true. And the next thing is you're on a plane to somewhere else. Very true, very On true. On to the next thing. Yes. <laughs> Meeting more people. Um, but I'm glad to have it back, to be honest, because the oh, pandemic, yes. it was hard. It was hard just yes. being on Zoom, because this, looking at each other in the face, it's like this, there's nothing replaces this. This yes. is amazing. Yeah, definitely. Really, really appreciate it. Appreciate you being here. Thank you. Love Likewise. that you made it to J Focus. And, Thank you. Uh, really Thank looking forward to watching your keynote. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you.